Recently, a YouTube channel named The String produced a video about the science behind temple design. It was extremely thought-provoking and raised awareness to Sadhguru's free temple movement. However, YouTube recommended this channel named Science is Dope, where they tried to debunk String's video. However, the so-called science channel did not bring much science into the debate. So this is my take on the topic as a whole, using actual scientific citations. You're watching Science is Dope, my name is Pranav, and let's check out the pseudoscience that this channel String brings in his latest video. The confidence and cockiness you're gonna find in his video is inversely proportional to any science you're gonna find in it. I've never seen greater misrepresentation of science and politics than done by this channel. And followers of this guy, the only ones who are gonna trust every word he says, anyone who can think for themselves, will see right through his bullshit. Let me. Now this is what he did uh, in a recent video with Rihanna and the farmers protest to associate her with anyone he wanted simply to forward a certain political message. Many people have already spoken out about this. Here he is doing the exact same thing with random scientific phenomena to make a point glorifying temples. So right off the bat we can see that he is using the strings previously political video to try and make his argument valid. The title of Prano's video is about debunking the science of temple design and hence to bring previous videos that String has done that have nothing to do with the science of temples is showing that Pranav's argument is not strong enough. Why is a channel named Science is Dope dealing with political issues? Obviously, viewers watch a science channel for scientific discussion, not political. In terms of psychology, this is a manipulation tactic known as character assassination. In simple terms, Prana felt the need to say this to reframe the debate right at the beginning. He takes a dig at the string's character as a manipulation tactic to influence the portrayal of string. And this will cause Prana viewers to develop a negative view on the string before the video even starts. It is important to note that an ethical scientific channel would just deal with the scientific facts brought forward, not with political discussion. He gives a flow of arguments in this video which is surprisingly coherent. Fortunately, the people who watch this video might think he's making sense because of his coherence. I'm flabbergasted. This man literally said that it's a problem that people believe in arguments that is logical and consistent. Is it not common sense to believe points that are coherent? Unfortunately, the people who watch this video might think he's making sense because of his coherence. But since Prano's argument is inconsistent and incoherent, I can understand why he will have a problem with the string's scientific video. First, he says, when sounds fall on a stone or a rock, they reflect and cause an echo. Sounds can reflect off of any reflective surface. It can be any hard and non porous surface and it's probably reflective like say this LCD TV screen or this wooden panel. The so the string explained in their video that sound echoes off rock. And then Pranav goes around and shows that sound can also echo off any surface such as his TV or this wooden panel. However, the string did not say sound echoes only from rocks, which makes me wonder why did Prana feel the need to indicate different surfaces. But, since we're on the topic, I just want to indicate that Pranav is not exactly correct, and actually further proved the string's point. The rock in the temples from the original video echoes better than the wood panel that Pranav showed. This is because wood absorbs more sound than rock. Wood has a porous nature, which improves its sound absorption quality, and this decreases its echoing effect. Whereas the temple rock will have cleaner, louder echo because it is a non-porous material, and this therefore proves the string's point. ...surface to be about 17 meters. 
So the best place for this to happen is an open space like a mountain top where sound can go more than 70 meters away from you, reflect and come back and you hear the same sound as an echo. It does not happen because of a stone or a rock as he says. Imagine if you're doing it in a closed place, what would be the amount of echo? Obviously much more than the open space. This is completely wrong as I've shown you. So once again, Pranav has misunderstood acoustics. He says that closed spaces do not equal a better echo. However, in the study of acoustics, reverberation happens when there are multiple reflections of a sound wave in an enclosed environment, such as the small room that String explained from the temple. It is important to note that reverberation results in a multiplicity of echo. Inside the temple, you will find a linga or a statue made of a rock. Now, people send some sounds to the rock. Not just today, it's been practiced since thousands of years. Interestingly enough, the idol in the temple chamber is an irregular object in the room that prevents reverb rather than causing it. So he gets this part completely wrong. This is false. Reverberation can be reduced by absorption using materials such as fiber, cushion, cotton, plastics, and this happens once it reaches the wall or the ceiling. However, the murti or the stone used as an idol in the temple is not a high absorbing material and therefore increases the reverberation, not decreases. What does the sound do to the human body? He explains this in the video. Let's look at what he says. 72% of your body is water. 12% is earth, 6% is air, 4% is fire, and the remaining is space. Don't you think this sound has an impact on your system? The five element model is completely wrong. I've explained why it is before. Uh, but, and, and how are you made up of 4% fire? Shouldn't you be getting like third degree burns all the time? So the whole thing about how you are made up of the five elements is a topic for another day and String obviously used it for simplistic terms such as you can be broken up into the different elements it refers to the processes in the body space refers to the cavities in the body but Prana fails to recognize this logic and then tries to make a joke about being on fire when they say you comprise of fire it refers to the burning of calories or the burning of fat or fueling the body. Okay, first, this is not just any sound. These are musical notes. Musical notes are standing waves that happen on a guitar string or in the air column of a flute. They never say the same about the human body, especially considering these are not simple musical notes that you hear in a temple. Now, people send some sounds to the rock. Not just today, it's been practiced since thousands of years. The voice is a musical instrument, not just guitar strings that Pranav tried to imply. And I would like to add that Sanskrit is meticulous about the way the language is spoken. So it's not just random words being said. A mantra is a sacred utterance and gives off a certain vibration. It is important to note that Sanskrit has precise acoustal characteristics and this makes precise vibrations when chanted. Also, these mantras have been passed down through precise oral tradition throughout history from Vedic pundits to disciples. And this transfer of mantras requires precision in intonation and pronunciation from both guru and student. He says another thing here which I thought was really funny. The kind of parasynthetic differences that he's getting is anonymous. Oh my god. Anonymous? Seriously? It's like he can say a big English word and whether or not it makes sense, if he says it with enough conviction, his bucks are gonna believe him and trust that he knows what he's talking about. So this made me extremely upset and it's why I decided to make this video. It is obvious that the word implied is enormous, but I don't understand what is funny about making fun of the way someone speaks. 
English is obviously his second or third language and instead of trying to understand the points and the value of the video the string has published, you decide to make fun of the way a man speaks. And this bullying is not only limited to his English, but he also makes fun of the way String has edited his videos, which in my opinion are extremely professional and good quality. A science channel should not be unkind to others. A science channel should look at things objectively. Then he says that the sounds you do here in a temple are things like uh, Vishnu Sasnamam and Lalta Sasnamam, which are engineered in a particular way so as to make you either fall asleep or wake up in a fresh state of mind. And he demonstrates this by taking his friend to a doctor and giving him an EEG reading. He plays Lalita Sahasranamam on his phone and notes that there is a change in reading, which honestly I can't really tell from just this shot. Viction, his bucks are gonna believe him and trust that he knows what he's talking about. Pranav then goes on to say that only Bhakts, which I'm assuming is a kind of slur for Hindus, will believe the string when they say that mantras have an effect on the parasympathetic nervous system. And because of this, I'm going to share some international research done by reputed universities and researchers that show that mantras do have an effect on the body. The International Journal of Advanced Scientific Technologies in Engineering and Management Sciences published the scientific analysis of mantras and its beneficial effects. This study showed that chanting OM vibrates at 131.1 Hz, which is exactly the same frequency throughout nature. The American scientist Dr. Howard Steingel established that the Gayantri mantra was the most effective mantra as it produces a frequency of 110,000 Hz, which is soothing to both the human mind and animal life. Published in the same journal also showed the effect of Bij mantras and the frequency and effect on the human system. Dr. Robert Keith Wallace in the School of Medicine from the University of California did a study and found out that Sanskrit-based meditation resulted in decreased oxygen consumption, decreased carbon dioxide elimination, decreased cardio output and heart rate, as well as decreased pH and arterial blood pressure. Psychological Thought Journal, a European Union academic journal, published an article in 2019 that showed that the OM mantra was a tool for stress management and had positive effects on the human body such as the deactivation of the prefrontal cortex. And this study also suggests that OM chanting can be used in therapy for depression and epilepsy. It is also to be noted that using OM as a specific Sanskrit chant brings about neural regions being activated. Whereas a non-meaningful word TOM had no effect as the Sanskrit word OM. A Swedish study by Dr. Dokras on temple bells show that these bells are made up of a certain percentage of metals, that when rung, the bells produce a sound that creates unity in the left and right side of the brain, not to mention that the bells are specifically made to produce long strains of the sound, om. The metals that a bell is made up of is copper, silver, gold, zinc and iron, and represent the puncha bhuta. On the other hand, temple bells are made up of cadmium, zinc, nickel, chromium and magnesium. And in this study by Dr. Dokras, he explains that when the bell is rung, the loud noises echoes for 10 seconds. And the duration of this echo is good enough to activate all seven healing centers of the body. Meaning that temple bells are beneficial for your health. He also cited other scientists in his study that said that the sounds of the bells bring clarity in the brain's thoughts and increase concentration. So now that I cited some international research, it is easy to trust that the mantras that String brought into question does have a positive effect on the body. However, I do feel that it is an interesting body of research to see what effects different mantras have on the nervous system and the body as a whole. He then talks about the Dwaja Stambam, which apparently stores the energy transferred to it uh, by the Gopuram. 
and uh, apparently that's why uh, people touch their heads on it and they just don't know the reason okay even if the gopram was an antenna and antenna cannot transmit sound energy it can only transmit electromagnetic waves so pranav has obviously not researched electromagnetic acoustic conversion yes it is true that acoustic waves cannot directly interact with electromagnetic waves however when they both share a common medium and that medium has electrical properties as you would find in a temple then this phenomenon will occur through the propagation medium therefore the string is correct about a sort of antenna structure their idea is to benefit the human beings living in the city it's a free service will your doctors treat you for free doctors are bad people who use their signs and don't treat you for free temples they do it for free you heard it here folks if you have cancer or something go to a temple and get your free treatment don't go to doctors all they care about is money okay so this is just plain manipulation on what he said at no point did he say doctors are bad or that you should not see a doctor he simply mentions that temples are a healthy place for your body to be but the science is dope channel is obviously trying to push a narrative forward and therefore try anything to discredit the string the science behind temple design is actually the first video that i've seen from the string and it's an extremely good video so if you've not seen the video in full i suggest that you go watch it and it also highlights the importance of sadguru's movement